mixing up the names and images of family members of victims with the killer's family members and refusing to change it or even do a correction note. Okay, I guess I'm actually going to address this. Okay, so part of what I do is reviews, and it's been a while since I've gotten anything out. I've been a little stunted. Part of it is I have trouble speaking negatively about people, but I'm going to do it right now. And honestly, it's not personal. I think I'm comfortable talking about it because it is specific and it is related to factual evidence. I judge researchers by academic standards set in my training as a historian and as an anthropologist. Annie Elise's 10 to life has more followers than my top three picks for accurate research combined. Her recent Crime Weekly ad buys made me cringe. And I just have to believe that neither Derek nor Stephanie have looked closely at her ethical standards. When I first found her, I was an instant fan. She speaks with authority and she's a strong storyteller, but that's not enough. And to hear testimony that should help them decide if she deserves the death penalty or not, which I personally believe she does. This was cold, calculated, and brutal. Many ways of her whole life until until it came to this one, they're trying to keep weight, and I think that they did an amazing job how they how they laid the whole thing out start to finish. So you, I wasn't shooting earlier, but you said she's your niece. She is. Your name? Jamie Mason. Jamie Mason. So tell me something about uh, Reagan. She was a mess. <laughs> she was an absolute mess. Um, she loved Kenley. Um, she was so excited for Braxlin. She loved taking pictures and having duck lips. You can see from her little girl from, from Kenley now with the pictures she takes, she's always got some duck lips going on. So, um, but she, she was just a mess. She was a sweetheart. Thank you so much. Sure. My niece is the most important person in the world to me. If something happened to her and I gave an interview sharing intimate memories of her childhood and some YouTuber posted it with the killer's aunt above my head in neon pink, I might track down the woman and make sure it is removed. There are people in the comments who are confused asking if the victim and killer were related. They're trying to make sense of this mislabeled clip. and figure out how this woman can be the aunt of the killer and be describing the childhood of the victim. If I were a man and my wife was attacked in an attempt to steal my unborn baby, resulting in both of them being murdered, and that same YouTuber mixes me up with the husband of the woman who slaughtered my family, supposedly in an effort to keep me or is it him i don't think words can encompass what i would be feeling i checked today august 16th 2024 to see if she's made any move to correct anything or apologize um it's been between six and eight months since i've checked and i found that there's a part two 
and here she refers to the error-laden first video as her most popular. And sadly, it still is. As you can see, I am wearing my red flag shirt today. My 10 to life red flag shirt, which I will also link in the description if you want to pick one up yourself. But I'm wearing it today because this case has so many red flags. And today we are going to be discussing updates on a case that I recently covered. And it was actually one of the most popular cases that I've ever done on my channel that had all of your heads and my head spinning with just anger, confusion, frustration, and a general sense of how in the world did something like this actually happen. So today, we're going back over the case of Taylor Parker and Reagan Hancock. Now, if you haven't watched my recent video on this case, that's okay, but you might want to go back before starting or even finishing this video and watch it, as there is a lot of background details to this case. Like I said, that was one of my more popular videos. I think it has like upwards of 800,000 views. So you definitely are going to want to watch that one first if you have not already. But in short, Taylor Parker was accused and recently convicted of killing Reagan Hancock and her unborn baby Braxlin, all while Reagan's three-year-old daughter was in the home. Then Taylor left with the baby and pretended she had given birth in her car with almost 3 million views and far, far too many comments praising her accuracy and attention to detail. It's that authority she speaks with. It sounds like she's telling you the truth and she knows what she's talking about. But she could just make up something completely out of whole cloth if she wanted to. Any of the creators could. So before you really decide who you're gonna trust, you might want to look into a case thoroughly and judge what they have to say against what you've uncovered yourself. We all have a few cases that are personal to us anyway. So if you're checking out a new creator, I really recommend going first for any stories that you're very familiar with so you have an idea of how accurate they are. If someone is just a good storyteller, they can feed you anything and you won't know the difference. Possibly one of the worst, most inaccurate cases I have ever seen on a YouTube channel was actually an early Kendall Ray video on a case I'm very familiar with. And I don't think she managed a single sentence without some mistake. But they're all mistakes I've heard before, and I know where they're coming from, and I've seen them repeated. I'm, I'm so familiar with the case that I knew where she was wrong. If I hadn't been familiar with the case, I would not have had a clue how wrong she was. Fortunately, she improved greatly with time. Um, I would be willing to bet that she would cringe rewatching that video or going over whatever her process was to research it. I, um, I have a lot of respect for Kendall Ray. I could develop respect for Annie Elise too. All she's got to do is acknowledge her mistake, apologize, pin something to her videos to make the facts clear to the audience and just do better going forward. I think I'm a really forgiving person, you know, just if you do something wrong, try to make it right and do better in the future. That's, that's all we can do. It's how I'm living my own standards. If you make a mistake, you acknowledge it. If you can fix it, fix it. If you can't just apologize and move forward with the intent to do better. And that's it, that's all you can do. I did write when I first saw this and pointed out where the mistakes were and suggested that if she didn't want to take the video down, she should pin something to the top comment. There were a number of other people who also commented and she maybe didn't see it. I only took a few minutes to scroll through. I didn't really do like a deep dive into the comments and I found a few people pointing out the errors. So if she has 
anyone that she knows personally who watches her, who reads the comments, if she ever read the comments, it's hard to believe she doesn't know. There are just too many by too many people and they've been there for too long. A lot of them go back to a year ago when it was posted. So I was just checking to see if she's made any updates. I even said that I understand that it's doing well and you might not want to take it down, but you can still pin a correction. And I felt like the victim's families really deserved that at the very least. So today I was just checking to see if it's still up, if the mistakes are still there, if there's any effort to correct or apologize. And there's nothing. This is not a review of Annie Elise, but I can tell you if I were doing the rapier for her, it wouldn't be very high. Yeah, her audio visual is fine. Her presence and personality are fine. Um, respect, integrity, empathy, and research would be absolute failures. So I guess I could do a quick rapier here. For respect, I will give her a two. For audiovisual, I will give her an eight. For presence and personality, I will give her a, let's give her a 16. For integrity, two. For empathy, three. For um, voice, it can get really emotional. She, she can be very vocally emotional. Um, so uh, I'll give her a three because to me it feels fake, but it could be real. I really don't know. It, it feels forced. It feels like she's trying to make her voice crack. Uh, for research, <laughs> I will give her a one. Um, yeah, she didn't, if she put much in, she just threw her notes up at the end and grabbed whatever landed. I, it's not, it's not a well-researched video. There are too many major significant mistakes being incorrect about important people in the story. You're not saying that the neighbor, Mike, who thought he heard a sound one night and has nothing else to do with the story was called John. It, it's not a small mistake about an insignificant party. You're talking surviving family, people who lived through this somehow, losing a wife and child, losing a little girl you watched grow up. I, Reagan's aunt and her husband both deserve apologies. So I would just like to apologize to Jamie Mason, who is Reagan's aunt, and to Homer Hancock, Reagan's husband and father of her two daughters. Side note, Kinley's biological father is not Homer, but Reagan and Caleb separated. And after their breakup, Reagan was a young single mom who ran into her old teenage sweetheart, Homer Hancock. The two had been on and off throughout their early teens, but this time it just felt right. So they start dating. Homer was just as great of a stepdad to Kinley as Reagan's stepdad was to her. Kinley even called him daddy. He ordered a little t-shirt in Kinley's size and put Kinley in it. He had her rush to find her mom. And the words on the t-shirt read, Mommy, will you marry my daddy? Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what you went through. I'm sorry for what Taylor did to you. I'm sorry 
that you've had to go through it also publicly. And um, it's the least of your problems, but I'm sorry on behalf of my little segment of the true crime world for Annie Elise and her irresponsible reporting on your family and what you guys went through. I think, I think you were entitled to better. I think it, it is important to get stories like Reagan's out for people, for women to know that if somebody befriends you while you're pregnant, you might want to put your guard up. As sick as it is, as twisted and as rare as it is, women need to be aware that this could happen. There are lots of reasons and opportunities why you would make new friends while pregnant. If you're going to clubs, you're going to meet club people. If you're going to Babies Are Us, you're going to meet pregnant people and people who've recently had babies. You might want to join mommy and me classes. You might want to go on Craigslist or buy nothing sites and trade for used clothes. And you know, kids are expensive. There's all kinds of stuff that people, really nice people are giving away really good quality stuff that has been gently used by their own children and outgrown and now they have nowhere to put it and they would like it to go to someone who needs it. And nine out of 10 times, you can trust that and you can go meet them. But there's that possibility that they are going to slice you open and steal your child. And what Reagan's story can tell you is just don't go alone. You know, be careful, keep a record of these people that you meet, especially if they want to meet you outside of public locations. Never go alone. And always make sure that they know that other people know where you are. The staff, other pregnant patients entering, thought that she's texting someone. I mean, it's not really the most alarming thing to see a pregnant woman sitting outside of a pregnancy clinic. The staff think maybe she's too emotional to drive. But she sits there for two hours. She's on her phone and it looks like she's on a mission. She is watching other women enter and leave the clinic, eyeing them like a hawk, furiously typing away at her phone. For two full hours, she was looking up license plates and searching up addresses oh of gosh. pregnant women entering and exiting the clinic. Wow. Taylor the Predator was hunting for pregnant women and the Predator was adapting. Once she discovered that many of these women had husbands that lived at home, she switched gears and started searching for support groups for pregnant teenagers. But then she thought that would be too difficult too. She needed an easier target. Someone that would let her in their home. Someone that would trust her. Someone nice and giving. Reagan. Reagan hired Taylor to do her wedding photo shoot. All the big recent milestones Reagan had Taylor be the photographer for. Taking pictures of her engagement, her wedding. And I'm sure through her time with Reagan, Taylor knew how kind of a person she was. You be safe, listen to your instincts, and don't leave the public sphere alone with someone. Don't go to their home, don't let them in your home. Don't meet them in some obscure place that is public but actually isn't gonna have anyone around. Make sure you're meeting people where nothing is gonna happen to you. So I do think it's important for stories to be told when this happens. Reagan's legacy, in part, is saving the lives of women who have heard her story and are going to change their behavior to protect themselves and their children. Taylor photographed their engagement photos and later their wedding. Even afterwards, Reagan went out of her way to leave a glowing review for Taylor. She wrote, she's just the best. To which Taylor responded, my favorite family. The two women, they were not close, but they stayed in contact via Facebook. And it wasn't until about 2020, Taylor kept reaching out to Reagan again to be like, oh my God, hey, you're pregnant. I'm pregnant too. And they're both pregnant with girls. In telling the story of a real human being. I think it's essential to be thoughtful and compassionate and 
accurate. <sighs> the way comments are just ignored, I really doubt that Annie would respond if Jamie Mason herself had posted requesting a change or correction or that the video be taken down. I wonder. I wonder if um, the family even knows about it. I kind of hope they don't. I mean, maybe it's good for them to go through and see thousands of people who have kind hearts and who care and who are mourning this family and are as devastated as an outsider can be with their loss. There's a lot of empathy. There are so many kind and caring people in the true crime community who are just pouring out their hearts about how they feel towards Reagan and both her daughters, the one that witnessed and the one who lost her life. It's just such an all around tragic story. I guess that's it. That's um, one of two things that happened that made me angry enough to start my own channel. So I'm going to leave this with uh, Jamie Mason. Stay safe, listen to your instincts, and I'll be back soon. Bye. Jamie Mason is Reagan's aunt and was in the courtroom when the verdict was read. Speaking for the family, Jamie praised the job attorneys did in prosecuting this three-week case. Sentencing doesn't start till October 12th, but just pray for the family because it's still a hard time until we know for sure, you know, what she's going to get. During the October 12th sentencing trial, the jury will have two options, life in prison without parole or the death sentence for capital murder. In my opinion, in my opinion, um, she deserves death. The same thing that she did to my niece and, and the baby girl. So um, that's my opinion. You know, people may look at it bad, but, you know, life for life to me. things real quick that you reminded me of uh, from last episode the commenters we had a couple corrections we wanted to make mm -hmm. right yes so i misspoke and i gave krista hoyt's birth date as being in um 1979 but she wasn't born in 1979 she was born in 1971 she graduated in 1989 so my brain did a little um which it does with numbers. It did switch a little a number swap. Yeah. Kind of like I switch up phrases. Everyone came after me because I kept saying cough it up. It's chalk it up. Oh. <laughs> did you say cough it up? <laughs> People are like, stop coughing it up, Derek. That's gross. <laughs> and I'm like, it's a Derekism. How many times over the years have I combined multiple different sayings, phrases? I just make my own version. So <laughs> I'm, for, for copyright reasons, I have to. We're just going to cough it up to bad timing. Yep. No, like, no, like for, for the that Derek, that's a bad one. Don't, that's don't say that anymore. funny. Cough it up. Chalk it up. Chalk it up. So yeah, that we had that thing there and it was also Sean, right? He's, Sean. He's, yes. Eight-year-old Sean. Uh, when we were talking about the Grissom family, eight-year-old Sean is not Julie Grissom's son. He was her nephew. Um, I'm not sure how I made that mistake. Well, we got it right now. L listen, nobody's per we're not perfect, and that's what's great about YouTube. And I've, I said on Detective Perspective all the time, we're doing these cases every week. If we get a, a, a date or, or, or age wrong, that's what the comments are for. Let us know. We'll correct it simple so yeah and i mean um no no one's perfect but I, it does bother me when when these mistakes happen in the script because the research is done and you know these are people's lives and w we want to get, it, get right. it right so it does bother it right. me absolutely when that absolutely. happens yeah so thank you guys for pointing it out thank you for pointing out respectfully we love you so much we appreciate you this is a team effort as always and you are a big part of our team so thank you go team go team go team we're going to cough it up now. <laughs> cough it up to a, just a minor lapse in judgment.